Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. Such a joy to meet you today. And God is a good God and he is able to meet you at the point of your need. Uh, though we are at the very end of this year, God's mercies are still very fresh. And, and no matter whatever you've been waiting for, in your life. It doesn't matter. An year is ending and uh, God can still do things at the 11th hour and he can still do things in your life even in the days to come. Those of you who are watching us for the first time, a big warm welcome and today will be a good news day for you. And those of us who watch us every other week, a big warm welcome to you too. And may the Lord meet you today in a very special way as we delve into the Word of God. Shall we go? As we end a year, there might be so many things that's running in our hearts. Uh, one side, the good things that have happened this year. And one of the things that we can do is to be so grateful to God for all the good things in our lives. That including the very gift of life that we have, the nostrils in our, uh, the breath in our nostrils, the air in our lungs. And let us be so grateful to God for even every other good thing that God has done, the healing that he has done, the peace that he has brought. And, you know, let's be really grateful because so many times uh, the one thing that can be a temptation is to think and, and feel a bit low about the things that are yet to happen or the things that have gone the wrong way. And one of the things that we need to be careful is not to murmur, never to complain, uh, but rather to, to gather strength and, and say, God, yes, things have been challenging, but thank you for still seeing me through. Thank you for still keeping me strong to weather the storms of this year. And that kind of an attitude is actually the way to move forward as we look for the new year. Because as long as we stay focused on God, we are never losing. We are winning the battle. I want to tell you, I've been through very difficult times uh, that I could say in the past year. But as much as I have focused my attention on God, God helped me in awesome ways that I can tell you, I was able to continue to encourage, continue to minister, but also to see the goodness of God in my own life. And that's why I'm here now. Uh, we're not here because we've never seen hard times. No, God has been there so good even in the hard times. And so the most important thing is focus on God and, and be grateful and uh, God will help you to be strong. Today, I want to talk to you about how not to quit in prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Now, Jesus many times used parables to bring out some powerful truth. A parable is actually not an imaginary story necessarily. It is actually a real instance that happened somewhere, sometime, that Jesus uh, wanted to bring out powerful truths by using the parable. And here is another parable that he brought to, uh, to really explain, to really come out with a truth that we should never give up. Fainting means to give up. So we should never give up, but we need to pray. I think that's an apt message for this season because when you started a year, you had a lot of hopes, aspirations, maybe 
you thought this year things would turn out better concerning your family or maybe you you felt and you were seeking you were desirous for a marriage that uh, you would have a marriage and you would have a good family life and for somebody it might have been that you've been looking for um, openings in a job and you felt that this year you would get a good job or you would have a promotion in, in whatever you've been doing. But things have been tight. Things have been tight maybe for someone who's been looking for a reprieve from the financial distress. Uh, and you felt that this year somehow things would open up for you. Yes, you have come through, but there have been still things that need to change. And, and you feel like you are tired. You feel like you're weary. You feel like somebody needs to lift you up. And, and I want to tell you, God's coming your way today to do that, to encourage you, to lift you up, to speak a good word to you. Jesus says in this parable, don't give up. Don't lose your heart. You should not faint, but rather you need to pray. So I want to talk to you about not to give up in praying. How did Jesus bring forth this truth? Here's a parable, verse 2 onwards. Talks about three distinct people. Luke 18 verses 2 to 8. Verse 2 says, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So there are three characters recorded in this parable. One is a widow who is actually the subject of the parable. And this widow has a problem. The problem was... There was an enemy, which is character number two, who tried to disturb this widow in some way. I probably, I feel that probably uh, the enemy came to, to take away what belonged to the widow because he felt that she is a very weak person, very lower down in the society's hierarchy. Nobody is there to to stand for her, nobody is there to guard her, nobody is her protector her, or guardian, and, and, and she is weak. So he took advantage of her situation and plunders her, maybe her property or her land. He grabbed something that was actually belonging to the widow, and that was what the enemy did. And there is also a judge in that city who is character number three. Now, the Bible talks about the book of Judges. That is soon after Israelites occupied the land of uh, Canaan, which is the promised land. Now, the judges started ruling them. The last judge being the prophet Samuel himself. So, the judge was actually like a king. He was the ruler. He had great authority. He actually fought for these people uh, from external uh, forces. He protected them. Also, he was the judge who had so much authority among the people that when he said something, Everybody had to comply to the verdict that the judge gives. So these are the three people. 
the widow, her enemy, and the judge. Now, this widow was attacked by the enemy and he was he had plundered something which is special for her. What did the widow do? Now we're going to learn three powerful truths. Number one, she goes to the judge. The Bible talks about this judge being a very exceptional person in the sense that he never feared God, nor he had respect for men. All of the judges that God raised, they had fear for God. God chose them, used them, and delivered the people. But this man was not fearing God, neither respected men. And this widow keeps on going and asks him and keeps on, she keeps on asking him, finally, the case is won on her behalf. And what the enemy had plundered was given back to her because the judge decided that she is she would trouble him too much if he would not respond to her in a favorable, righteous way. That is an unrighteous judge making that righteous decision. All because this widow did not give up. We see the first truth being, she knew the nature of the enemy and she understood that she could not fight this battle in her physical strength because she knew the enemy was stronger than her. And she knew she should not go directly to the enemy to confront him. Now that gives us a powerful lesson in the battles of the life that we have. Maybe it's a battle concerning um, a health issue a job issue, a financial issue, a family issue. We need to understand that many times the devil is behind so many things that's happening in our lives, though partly it can be us who are responsible for things in our lives. But we cannot rule out and discount the fact that the devil is a liar. The devil is a thief. The devil is a plunderer. When we go to the letter of Peter, in fact, the first epistle of Peter to God's chosen children, we read in chapter 5 and verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Now, Peter clearly tells that the devil is like a roaring lion. He seeks whom he may devour, which means he wants to plunder what belongs to God's children. John 10, 10, Jesus says that the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is the role and the function of Satan. He, he steals our healing. He steals our finances. He steals the peace in the family. And uh, he does that. Now, the thing is, Many times, the devil doesn't do it directly. He uses uh, other ways. He uses situations. He uses sometimes some people to spoil the peace. He uses some people to, to rob you of your financial well-being. It could have happened in your life in the past. Many times, what we think is it is that person who has done this to me, and we get offended, we get upset, we get angry, we develop bitterness or resentment concerning or towards a person who's been the reason for stopping your promotion, for making your life feel miserable, for other reasons why you're not able to move forward in life. 
Now, that itself is a trick of the enemy because if the devil could make you angry and bitter, then he knows for sure that you're not moving forward because bitterness and anger is going to keep a person, hold a person from moving forward. So this widow was too smart that she did not go and fight the enemy herself, but she knew the nature of the enemy, that she could not win this battle in her physical strength. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Paul writes, it's, it's a very key scripture that we need to uh, understand in life about our battle. It says, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place. So we're not supposed to fight these uh, things with our own strength. Sometimes in bull fighting, a man holds a red cloth and the bull thinks that the red cloth is the enemy because it gets angry looking at the red and, and tries to charge, but then, you know, it actually is overpowered by the man. So this keeps happening, but the bull never understands that the man holding the red cloth is actually the person who is against it. So firstly, we need to understand that our battle is not against flesh and blood or people or human beings or the situation, but the devil himself. So if you've been fighting a situation, You've been making a lot of efforts, but you feel things are not progressing. You feel you're fighting people in your workplace, people who don't want to uh, see you go up. And maybe you're fighting even a peaceless situation in the family. It's time to actually shift the battle from the natural to the spiritual. Because it's actually the unseen that controls the scene the supernatural that controls the natural. That's number one. The widow, instead of fighting the enemy directly, she went to the judge. Secondly, the widow actually puts her faith on the judge to handle this problem for her. Now, that's important. That's the second thing that we need to do. Firstly, we need to really quit fighting things in the natural realm and, and move into the spiritual realm and believe that it's, it's actually the battle in the spiritual realm and the victory has to be won in the spiritual realm. Secondly, we need to believe God and His Word because it is God who can actually fight the battle for us and give us victory. When the Israelites were standing before the Red Sea and the enemies were following them and they could not do anything. And Moses actually speaks a powerful word of faith. You know, he, he didn't ask them to try to somehow fight this Egyptians or try to start swimming somehow. No, that would have been impossible. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We read that in Exodus chapter 14. And he says, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. That is faith. That is faith that God would do what he only can do. That is engaging God in the affairs of our battle. That is bringing God into the scene. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. Paul says, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Now that is, I have believed in God and I believed in his word and he's able to keep it. Now, 
in spite of the judge to whom the widow went, is an unjust judge. She still believed in his power. Now, our God, to whom we go to in prayer, is not only almighty, but he is our Father. We read in Luke 18 in, this, in the following verses that God is really caring for those who have been chosen by him, and he will actually be careful in handling our situations. We're going to read that verse in just a moment. But the difference between that judge and our God is our God is a father, and he is going to be careful about us, and he is caring for us, and he is going to work out things for us because he has chosen us. Luke 18, verse 7. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. So God wants to do things in our lives in his time, and he doesn't want us to, to actually wallow in that pain. So secondly, it's go to God in faith. Put your faith on him, knowing that he's a caring father. and He's going to work things out for you on your behalf. And finally, the third thing that we see is she never gave up. She persisted till the case was won. And so also we, as God's children, we cannot give up. We need to persist in prayer. We cannot quit. You might have the question, if God is really a caring father, why don't he do things at the wink of an eye? There are so many times in the Bible that he has done that way. Even in our lives, we've seen God intervene in a moment or in a short time and, and do good things, miracles. There are times that God really operates in our life in his own way. And that's because he wants to develop our character. On the other hand, we need to press on till the devil is disengaged in the matter. You know, when kids are too small, they are babies, we spoon feed them. But when they grow, we want them to eat by themselves. Then we want them to help cook for us and do things for us. And that is maturity. So also, we should not give up just because things didn't happen this year. Keep praying, keep pressing on, and you will see victory the way this widow saw victory in her life because God is faithful. Now, I want to pray with you as we come to the close of this teaching. And I want to encourage you to, to remember these three things. Number one, Remember, the battle is spiritual. And don't keep fighting in the natural. Secondly, believe in God of his power to answer you and his willingness to do so in your life because he is your father. Number three, persist in prayer. Persist in holding on to the promises. And don't quit because God is willing to help you and he will at the due time. The widow got what she lost back to her. David was restored in all the things that he had lost and nothing was missing. So also God will restore you all that you had lost. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for speaking to us through your word. I pray for everyone who is really going through a tough time in their lives. They have seen difficult times in this year. They are really longing for breakthroughs, longing for healing. Might be wondering why things are so difficult and I am not able to figure out. But Lord, today you have spoken to them of never to give up in prayer. Because the battle is not against flesh and blood, it is spiritual. And you are a faithful God. 
Just like Paul who said, I know the one whom I believed. I pray your children will also say the same thing, that I know the one I believed. He is faithful. He is a caring father. He is a good father. He will never fail me. I pray that faith will arise because you gave your son for us. How much you would give everything else. Help them to persist. Help them never to quit. And I pray that they will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. For those of them who have been fighting sickness, today I speak healing. Those of them who've been fighting financial hardship, I speak a breakthrough in their life. Open a door. May they see that light coming through that tunnel, O oh God. For those of them fighting hardship in families, give them peace. And those of them waiting for the right person in marriage, for marriage, you will do that for your children and they will glorify you. Be glorified. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So God bless you. It was just such a joy to connect with you. And we look forward for greater days in the new year to come. I want to wish you a very blessed advanced new year. May God's blessings be on you. May you see the goodness of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you again in the next program.